When threatened by orcas, sperm whales rely on a time-tested strategy called a marguerite formation. They form a tight circle with the young and vulnerable tucked away safely in the center while the adults position themselves facing outward, tails inward, like the petals of a flower. Each whale presents its massive head and jaws towards the outside, ready to defend the group. This formation makes it nearly impossible for predators to isolate and attack a calf without getting rammed or bitten by several adults. And for centuries, it worked. Orcas would back off, unable to break through this living fortress of straight whale flesh. Until the 1800s, when a new predator arrived in the North Pacific. Humans. They quickly realized that these formations made sperm whales incredibly easy targets. Packed together near the surface, they had nowhere to run. What had once been an effective defense strategy against the orcas suddenly became a fatal mistake against humans with harpoons. It looked like there was no end to this whale slaughter. But then, between 1848 and 1852, the whale hunt rate fell by 58%. Within a few years, sperm whales banded forming circles, a behavior that was built into them by millions of years of evolution. Shockingly, this change didn't stay limited to a single part. Even groups of sperm whales that had never seen a whaling ship started acting like they knew exactly what to do. Flee with fast-moving ocean currents and stay one step ahead of the hunters. It was almost as if they'd been handed over a survival strategy. But what could possibly allow a species to abandon millions of years of hardwired instinct after just a few years of dealing with human hunting? Can sperm whales really pass down knowledge from one pod to another? Can they warn each other about danger? And is it possible that whatever they're using to communicate, we could actually decipher the meaning? Out of the 60 feet that make up a sperm whale, Nearly a third of it is just their head. At its core is the spermaceti organ, a wax-filled cavity that early whalers mistakenly believe contains sperm. Yes, that's where the whale gets its name. And for centuries, whalers harvested this waxy substance as oil. Today, we understand it as part of one of the most advanced sonar systems in the natural world. When a sperm whale clicks, air is pushed through a pair of muscular lips near the front of the head. That burst of sound travels backward through the spermaceti, reflects off an air sac, and bounces forward through another waxy organ, which amplifies and focuses it into a tight beam. The result is a click that can reach over 230 decibels, louder than a jet engine, and by far the most powerful biological sound ever recorded loud enough to blow out eardrums, rattle internal organs, and knock a diver senseless. This focused beam moves through water like a spotlight. It hits an object, prey, a rock wall, even another whale, and echoes back into the whale's lower jaw. The vibrations travel to the ears, and from there, to a brain uniquely adapted to interpret them. And sperm whales make full use of this unique ability. You see, they spend most of their lives hunting deep below the surface. The hunt begins with slow, deliberate clicks. These are long-range signals that scan the water ahead, searching for prey like giant squids lurking in the darkness. As the whale moves deeper, the tempo shifts, the clicks speed up, turning into a rapid-fire burst called a creak. Up to 90 clicks a second, the sound sharpens and buzzes as if the whale is zeroing in on a target with a sonar spotlight. These creaks are short but precise, helping the whales lock into squids sometimes hundreds of meters below. Then, in the final moments of the chase, the clicks shift again into buzz clicks, rapid, sharp pulses fired in quick succession to track even the slightest movement as the whale closes in for the strike. But hunting is only part of what sperm whales use sound for. When they aren't feeding, they talk to each other by clicking sharply, precisely, and in distinct sequences. These sequences are called codas, short patterns of clicks exchanged during social interactions. A common one recorded across many pods is known as one plus one plus three. 
two slow clicks followed by three faster ones. Each part has its own collection of these phrases. Some are shared between families, others are unique. What does this mean? No one knows. For decades, scientists wondered how many codas whales actually used. The early answer was 20, maybe 30, but that's changed. In one study, researchers analyzed more than 9,000 recordings from a single vocal clan in the Caribbean. They found 21 based codas patterns, but with over 300 distinct variations in rhythm, spacing, and ornamentation. They called it the sperm whale phonetic alphabet. One of the most interesting discoveries was how whales use tempo to improvise. Sometimes they add an extra click, sometimes they shift the timing, sometimes they slow down, then speed up, depending on who they're talking to. It's not a language in the way we speak one, but it behaves like one. Repeated, learned, shared, and possibly meaningful. Whales that share the same codas tend to travel together. These families often form larger alliances, called vocal clans, based on similar dialects. Each clan has its own accent, as in its own way of clicking. Calves spend years babbling before they fully adopt the dialect of their group. Just like human children, they learn through repetition and exposure. The patterns aren't encoded in their DNA, they're taught. When whales meet at sea, they often begin their interactions by exchanging codas. These aren't just greetings, they may function as identifiers. When pods hear familiar codas, they respond. When they don't, they stay distant. Researchers have seen entire clans pass each other by in silence. No clicks exchanged, as if they spoke entirely different languages. Sperm whales may even use codas to express identity each whale's version of a coda is slightly different, like handwriting. Some click faster, some slower. Some add tiny pauses between clicks. These micro patterns stay consistent across time, and they seem to be recognized by other whales. In recent years, researchers began to suspect these might function like names. And it makes sense given sperm whales don't live alone and consciously try to have meaningful interactions with each other. One of the clearest examples of this came in 2016. A powerful earthquake shook New Zealand's Kawakura region, triggering underwater landslides that wiped out the tiny creatures sperm whales feed on. Researchers tracking these whales noticed a major shift in behavior. Sperm whales began spending 25% more time at the surface between dives, likely to catch their breath before longer, deeper hunts. They abandon their usual feeding grounds and explore deeper parts of the canyon, searching for food that might have been flushed away. This sudden shift suggests whales might be using their complex clicks or coda to communicate about these changes, sharing warnings or new survival tactics. It was the first documented case of whales deliberately altering their vocal behavior in response to environmental danger. And sperm whales don't just share info, they sometimes jump into action as well. There's a pretty famous story from the 1970s about a group of sperm whales stranded in shallow water. Some got stuck, others nearby were chilling safely. The trapped whales supposedly started blasting out rapid urgent codas, like a whale SOS. Within hours, the nearby whales showed up and gave a push, literally helping their pals back into deeper water. Did this really happen? I'm not actually sure, and neither are the experts. It might just be a whale folklore or a splashy legend, but it sure sounds like something these clever giants could totally pull off. And all of this points to one possibility that Kodas might carry survival strategies. One profound example comes from the 1800s. Remember the North Pacific whaling attempts against sperm whales and how the whales began vanishing into fast-moving ocean currents? before the ships could reach them. It looks less like instinct and more like communication and action. It suggests that sperm whales were talking and sharing strategies with each other, passing on survival plans, possibly through their complex click patterns, telling each other, don't stay, swim fast, use the currents. Well, as much as we would like to decipher what whales actually say to each other, 
The exact meaning behind sperm whale's codas remains a mystery. Scientists have confirmed the clicks carry social identity, group membership, and emotional cues. They know whales coordinate during hunting, alert each other to danger, and maintain bonds across vast distances. But what are the actual messages? Are they more like, stay close, found squid deep, circle in tight? Or longer, more complex sentences like, the squid are migrating earlier this season, head south before the trench goes quiet. We don't know for sure yet. The content remains locked in sound patterns we've only begun to understand. However, in very recent years, researchers have actually turned to machine learning and artificial intelligence to crack the code. Teams at MIT and other institutes analyzed thousands of recordings, identifying recurring patterns and subtle variations impossible to detect by human ears alone. So, one of our ChatGPT's cousins is out there learning how to talk to whales. Its name is Project Cetacean Translation Initiative, or Project SETI, an AI system that can translate whale clicks into understandable signals. Its goal is to open up two-way conversation, not to just listen, but respond. Imagine a future where humans can communicate with whales, understand their social networks, and learn from their ancient wisdom. For me, that would be awesome. Straight Atlantis vibes from the Aquaman movie. But the truth is, AI isn't magic. It needs data, structure, and context. Human languages have all of that. Billions of sentences, rules, dictionaries, known meanings, but whale sounds? It's all clicks. Thousands of hours of them, but no clear meanings. No whale dictionary, no grammar book. It's like trying to translate Morse code without knowing what the messages actually mean. But does that mean it's not a language? If I don't understand someone's speech, does that make their language any less real? Sperm whales have been communicating with CODAS for thousands, if not millions of years, long before humans ever spoke. Their system may lack words or grammar as we know it, but it has structure, syntax, and flexibility. Maybe one day we'll finally understand what they're saying, but until that day comes, our conversation with them will remain a little one-sided.